Everybody, man, I hope everybody's having a productive day, full of blessing. Like I always say, is one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. So I got this interesting topic. It's because I did a video the other day. I can't remember what it was about, to be honest with you. I do a lot of videos a day, every day. And uh, he said, he left a comment. I immediately screenshot. I was like, yeah, I'm going to respond to this one. This was a cool one. I get his perception on it, but I'm going to give you mine. Let's get into the video. That being said, hit that subscribe button, hit that like, always leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Check the links in the description for my Apple and Spotify music. Go ahead and run my streams up. And you can check out my playlist section on my YouTube channel and check out my music right there. Thank you guys for you guys' time. Most importantly, thank you guys for you guys' support. Now, this is in regards to inmates' personal property. The individual pretty much said F property. You got to be able to do your time without it or the time will do you. There should be no attachments to personal property. Well, I beg to differ, so I'll be your huckleberry and explain why. Personal property can cause a lot of violence within the penal system, especially within gang members, because rule number one, mainline and SNY, nobody likes a jailhouse thief. They get smashed on, period. Weapons or just hands-on get removed. Stealing from another inmate in prison will follow you for the rest of your prison term. I mean, you may not get hit now or a couple months from now or a year from now, but prison is a very small world. It might, it might even be a non-affiliate. It might just show up to the yard like, I remember that fool jacked his celly for his property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he throws it in the air. Somebody catches it, throws it in the air. Somebody catches it. Next thing you know, an STG group member just like, oh, he's a jailhouse thief? Hey, bro, you want to earn your bones, bro? You want to earn your bones, man? Go put him to bed. Put him to bed. That's how it works, right? So let me give you an example. This happened on a level three. It was with the South Side faction, of course. So standard procedure is when a cop's on a shift, each cop and each shift has to search three cells. It could be A section, B section, or C section. Doesn't matter. He has to buy, buy per handbook, if he wants to follow the handbook and be a, a, you know, following the law like that, then three cells. So he goes up with a trash can, he'll search cells. Typical search. You know, throw your mattress up, fill on it, make sure no, no weapons are in there. You know, just rummages through the lockers, doesn't make a big mess. Inmates get mad and will fight you, will rush a cop because they're o everybody in jail is pretty much an OCD freak. It has to be organized a certain way, the clothes are folded a certain way. If you move it and you don't put it back, or if you just damage the whole locker and just throw everything crazy, that inmate on the SNY is going to come out and rush you. Mainline two. So the cop will go up with a trash can and he's pretty much going to. You know, just look for stuff. Most of the time, they're looking for Pruno, saved up apples, sugar, jars of syrup, whatever he can find and just throw it away. Now, if he happens to find a batch of Pruno, he'll more likely go to the outside yard and pop it like in front of the building in a 270 design or on that 180 design to have a shoe rec yard on the side of the building. They'll go pop it and make the porter come clean it up. Or they can just throw it away in the trash. But most of the time, if a porter sees that there's a bag in there, he's going to snatch and take it to his cell. He's going to sneak it, my boy. You ain't nobody throwing away good pruno, bro. Plain and simple. So this time, the cop decides to say, you know what? I'm going to pop the bag. So he pops the bag and searches the cell, throws dude's property all over the place. Pruno's on the ground, but the man's pictures are on the ground. So come on, now you got three gallons of pruno pouring everywhere on the tier. The porter got to clean that up. He ain't going to like that. The two inmates in the cell got to clean it up. They ain't going to like that. But imagine your white pro club soaking in some pruno. Or your baby pictures just floating in Pruno getting stained up. So they come in from wreck. Everybody, you can smell the Pruno in the building. Like, oh, yeah, man, that's a fire batch. Man, that's strong, man. It's damn near moonshine. It's damn near Alabama moonshine, redneck moonshine. And you go upstairs and do sees it. And he's like, what the hell? My baby pictures? My girl's pictures are floating in the Pruno? He wasn't having it. So what does he do? Goes downstairs, rushes the cops, take off on him. Bam, 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 bam. Cops hitting them. Bam, 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 bam. Come on now. What do you think is going to happen? Southsiders don't know what's going on. They just see one of their homies and a cop going at it. They jump in. Bam. Shit happens. And this may not be the same thing, right? But I also seen a transgender get his cell searched. And they kept making fun of this dude. And for some reason, he was being passive. He wasn't tripping. His, his name was Arlene. And for some reason, they searched his cell. 
And since he made custom bras for himself, because he was like 6'4", 280 pounds, so he had boobies, and uh, he was making custom bras and like booty shorts for himself. They confiscated that stuff. And then when he came out, he wasn't tripping that they confiscated it, but they made fun of him. They were like showing it to him, like at the uh, in the podium, like uh, making fun of him, pretty much putting him on blast. And what do you think that dude did? Literally came from his cell one day in all blues, walked into the office where the cops were at and started bombing on the cops. Yeah, that's a different form of personal property. But when you mess with an inmate's personal property, violence will escalate. It all it takes is what the inmate's willing to fight for. In Tehachapi, during the time when the corrupt cops were pretty big, even around my time, even after the FBI intervened and walked like 11 cops off of the yard in Tehachapi, some of them cops did not care. You disrespect them, you piss them off, you front them off, they're going to go in that cell and they're going to tear stuff up. They're going to rip your lines off your wall, all your clothes are going to be on the ground, pictures are going to be ripped, all of a sudden your TV has a crack in it, they have to confiscate it. Oh, there wasn't a name on it. I didn't see it. So go ahead and follow 602 and hopefully you get compensated and get it back. Hopefully you don't. Some of, this, some of the property that's confiscated, like headphones, CD players, TVs, ends up in the office and goes to the porters because the porters are giving them information. Next thing you know, your TV's floating around right in front of you. You don't even see it. People take that stuff real serious. Just like I told you guys a long time ago, seeing Norteños remove an individual because he decided to come out and say that when his cell was in vocation, he was masturbating to his wife's pictures and they removed him. On another occasion, on the same yard, on the same yard in Susanville, Lassen Yard, an individual got removed because his excuse was my property was mixed with his property. But the only thing that was mixed with his property was the canteen. They put all their canteen in one big bag. Dude went to store. He went to store. Dude locked it up. So he wanted to keep his food. But since he just kept his food, he decided, you know, I'm going to take a CD here. I'm going to take this. I'm going to take his earbuds here. I'm going to take that. And even took a photo album that he assumed had pictures of girls and thongs. Because you can get these catalogs where you can buy girls and thongs from all over the world. Like 10 for a book of stamps or, or 10 for $10 in the mail. And uh, it just so happened that that photo album had pictures of one of his homegirls he was writing with the pictures of the girls and the thongs. So in his mind, he came up with showing people on the yard... Dude had a homie from his hood that seen the photo album, didn't really care about the girls and the thongs. He could have kept those. He could have just took them out himself if he wanted to because he's already been a jailhouse thief, taking out these other little small stuff. But he seen pictures of his homegirl and he knew that wasn't right. Stroke him up. They didn't even think about issuing the boy DP because jailhouse thievery is frowned upon on SNYs on mainland. That is, that's like borderline Chomo Pedo kind of stuff, man. It's just everybody hates thieves. But thievery does go on. A lot of people try to deny it. It's the principle. It's the principle that, man, you don't know what it's like. And I understand a lot of people are going to be under the assumption that, hey, man, you guys are doing jail time. You guys are being punished. You guys have got sentence. It shouldn't be Disneyland for you guys. You guys shouldn't have it like good. You know, rent free, three meals a day, clothes on your back, doing nothing, free health care and all this crazy stuff. You guys should be punished. You guys should be uh, not enjoying yourselves. I get that. But CDCR does have the R, which stands for rehabilitation. So at some point, you just can't put criminals in jail and deprive them of everything and just leave them to their thoughts and their own mind frame and expect them to be sane and not go crazy. That's why solitary confinement, a lot of people went crazy. That's why suicide rates are crazy. That's why individuals become violent when they have nothing to live for, when they have nothing to look forward to. The worst thing about an inmate is when he ain't got nothing to lose. Those are the most dangerous inmates in prison because that fool will stab you for no reason because he's not going home. He will stab you for any reason because there ain't nothing on the yard for him besides dope and sleep. That's it. He don't. He wants. He'd rather be in the hole because he's tired of waking up every day, rolling up his mattress or programming. Those are the most dangerous inmates when they have nothing to look forward to when they sit on that cell and just think all day. I've had cellies that are be grumpy, mad. The world's gonna end, ready to burn the world. But let that letter come through that door changes that whole man's mentality next thing you know it's he's getting he's in a good mood he starts talking about what the letter says and he goes down memory lane next thing you know you're like hey if we want a shot yeah i want a shot if we want a honey bun you want to have a right, go ahead and tell me fool. go ahead and tell me yeah for real and you just start telling war stories because something about that day made it a better day something about getting that letter from your girl that letter from your kids that card in the mail Next thing you know, you grab your CL twenties, you throw on your oldies, man, your Art LeBeau collection, or you throw on Key Sweat, or you throw on this, and you start writing your girl for like ten hours, 
five pages long, front and back. Do her. Then, then you get more excited because she wrote you a letter and she said she's going to send you money. So you go on a tier and be like, anybody's having any drawings for sale? Yeah, I'll buy them for I'll buy them. Now you got a drawing to send to you and to her and the kids. Next thing you know, you send the mail out. Then you start calculating in your head. All right, man, I, I, she's going to get it Friday. And we already assumed that she's going to get the letter, read it, be inspired to be Shakespeare, and start writing right there, you know, all poetic justice. And then we're going to get a letter ASAP. Like they ain't got a life to live on the streets. So Monday comes, they're waiting for mail. Tuesday comes, they're waiting for mail. Wednesday comes, and now he's mad. Like, where's she at, bro? She should have responded right now. Thursday comes, oh, man, she's cheating on me with modicles, bro. I already, I already know she's with Sancho, bro. Come Friday, he gets a letter. Man, I love baby, man. I knew she was going to come through. I never had a doubt in my mind. That's how guys think, bro. It's like a mental game we play with each other. But being able to reach into your locker and read letters that you collected over the years. Just remembering what your family said, what they promised, what your girls promised. Just reading those letters and seeing every day, once a week, her coming through for you. Reminding you of her love and loyalty and what you need to do to, to finally quit banging and come home and be free with her. Because she's sticking by you. Looking at your baby's pictures like, what am I going to do? How am I going to be a better father? That's a form of rehabilitation in the mind that some of these inmates need. Yeah, a lot of inmates get involved in gangs and politics and will go stab each other in the face for all they care and will lie to their families. Man, I need $100, man. I, it's not even for dope, man. I swear, man, I'm just starving, bro. I ate it all. I ate it all. Yeah, you're going to have scandals, vatos like that that will take advantage of their family and take advantage of the love and appreciation and support, the moral support that they have on the outside. But there's a lot of inmates that just take pride that they have something to go home to, that they have something to look forward to. I went off and on when it came like that. Me, to escape my realities, I would sit there and draw for hours. A banya would take me three, four days. That's three, four days, whole day, just shot of coffee, shot of coffee, in my own little world, headphones. If I had a politic, I politic. If there was no politics, I'm drawing for everybody else. Sell it for 40 bucks. As soon as that banya went out the door and I got paid, I'm drawing another one. I'm drawing another one. I was submitting to magazines. Street Low magazines, uh, Artesano magazines, to uh, art websites to get money. That was my escape from reality. You know, just to be able to have something to enjoy. The mental health program is so serious that if an inmate doesn't have a TV or a radio in his property, the state has to provide one for them so they don't go crazy in that cell. You try to be in a cell waiting for your property. Just doing time, just looking at the walls, reading shit kickers or reading Sidney Sheldon or Dean Coombs or Stephen King or whoever else they have on that cart. Well, half the time, one side is all Christian books. So you're just like, all right, whatever. I'll just stare at the wall and just, you know, walk to my door every 30 minutes to see what everybody's doing. Watch people fish. You know, you can you can drive yourself crazy. There was times where I didn't have my property for days, for days, even months. Where I felt like, oh, man, I'm about to start talking to myself. I'm pacing back and forth. I, I can't sit still. I don't know what to do. You know, idle hands, man, that will destroy the mentality bad. So having love and, and sentimental value for your personal property, even going to war for it. Yeah, I get it. I get what you're trying to say. But sometimes that is a form of rehabilitation because these inmates will learn that this whatever property, this is what their life got reduced to is a CD player a 13-inch screen TV, some letters, some a couple, uh, two outfits, a pair of shoes, and pictures, canteen, and your property, just whatever's left, and your hygiene. That's what this life's value really is to this man. This is all I have left. This is all I'm worth. But yeah, when they get so much support from the streets that enables them to have a better program than others, maybe this is a hidden lesson to rehabilitate. Because if they can appreciate this small value of property, personal property that belongs to them, that reminds them of life, that reminds them of their existence, of who they are and who they are to other people, they can finally come home and realize, man, this freedom has a lot more to offer to you if you can take advantage of it and not take it for granted for once. You know, friends, moral support, people that want to see you on the streets, jobs that give second chances to felons. Being able to work hard for your money, being able to pay your bills and say, man, I have a house or I have an apartment, I have a car, I have things that belong to me or are of value. That's what some of these inmates need to be taught is how to value what they have now, but to also reflect on what they have now and how much more they can have if they actually come outside and change, put the gun down, put the flag down and say, you know what? There's a lot more to life than just sitting in that cell rotting in hell. So I, I kind of disagree. I beg a different when it comes to your statement. You can either do hard time 
or you can make the time be a little bit easier. And personal property makes it better for any inmate to sustain a mental stability and not go crazy. So that's what I got to say about that. So with that being said, like I always say, is one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done.